The cabin in the pines, Sarah had always loved the wilderness. The idea of a weekend getaway in a secluded cabin, surrounded by dense pines and the serene silence of nature, seemed like a perfect escape from her hectic life in the city. So when she found an old cabin listed for rent online, nestled deep in the woods of New Hampshire, she booked it immediately. It was an impulsive decision, but it felt right. The cabin was exactly as she imagined. Rustic, wooden, and isolated. The road leading up to it was barely a road at all, just a narrow dirt path winding through the thick forest. The nearest town was miles away, and her cell phone had lost service about an hour before she arrived. It was perfect. She spent the first day unpacking, enjoying the quiet, and breathing in the fresh pine-scented air. As evening approached, she lit the old stone fireplace and settled into an armchair with a book. The only sound was the crackling of the fire and the occasional rustle of leaves outside. It was peaceful, calming, and everything she had hoped for. As night fell, the forest outside became an impenetrable wall of darkness. The cabin's few windows offered no view beyond their glass, just the reflection of the dim interior. Sarah felt a slight unease, but she brushed it off as the unfamiliarity of being so far removed from civilization. She locked the door, bolted the windows, and went to bed. The first night was uneventful though her sleep was restless. Strange dreams haunted her, visions of shadowy figures moving through the trees, their faces obscured, their whispers unintelligible. She awoke several times, each time feeling as though someone was watching her. But every time she forced herself to get up and check, the cabin was empty, and the forest outside was silent. The second day was more of the same. She spent the morning hiking through the woods, exploring the area, but she couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. The sensation grew stronger as the day wore on, an almost palpable presence that seemed to linger just beyond her sight. That evening, as she was preparing dinner, she heard a sound, a soft, soft, rhythmic tapping coming from somewhere outside. It was faint, almost imperceptible, but it made her freeze. She turned off the stove and listened intently. The tapping continued, steady and deliberate, it sounded like it was coming from the front porch. Slowly, she approached the door, her heart pounding in her chest. She reached out, her hand trembling as she turned the knob. The door creaked open, revealing the dark porch and the empty forest beyond. There was nothing there. She stepped outside, squinting into the darkness, but saw only the dense line of trees and the faint outline of the path she had driven up the day before. The tapping had stopped, replaced by the low rustle of wind through the pines. She shivered, suddenly feeling exposed and vulnerable. She quickly retreated inside, locking the door behind her. That night, the dreams returned, more vivid and terrifying than before. The shadowy figures were closer now, their whispers louder, more insistent. She could almost make out the words, but they slipped away as soon as she tried to focus on them. She woke up in a cold sweat, her heart racing. The cabin was silent, but the sense of being watched was stronger than ever. She spent the third day inside, too unnerved to venture out. The daylight hours passed slowly, with Sarah jumping at every creak of the floorboards, every gust of wind. By evening, she was exhausted, her nerves frayed. She was just about to settle into bed when she heard it again. The tapping. This time, it was louder, more insistent. It came from the back of the cabin, near the small kitchen window. She crept toward it, every step feeling heavier than the last. She reached the window and peered out, but could see nothing in the inky blackness. Then, just as she was about to turn away, she saw it. A flash of movement, something darting past the window, too fast to make out any details. Her blood ran cold. She backed away, her mind racing. What was out there? A person? An animal? The tapping resumed, now on the opposite side of the cabin, near the front door. It was as if whatever it was knew she had seen it and was now toying with her. Terrified, she ran to the bedroom, locking the door behind her. She grabbed her phone, hoping against hope for a signal. But there was nothing. No way to call for help. She was completely alone with whatever was outside. The tapping stopped abruptly, replaced by a low, guttural growl that sent chills down her spine. It came from directly outside the bedroom window. She held her breath, listening as the growl grew louder, more menacing. Then, without warning, there was a loud crash. The sound of glass shattering, followed by heavy footsteps inside the cabin. Sarah's heart nearly stopped. 
Whatever was out there was now inside. She looked around desperately for something to defend herself with, but the room was bare. The footsteps grew closer, slower, as if whoever or whatever was savoring the moment. Then through the darkness, she saw the outline of a figure in the doorway, tall, misshapen, its face obscured in shadow. The figure stepped forward, and as it did, the moonlight streaming through the broken window illuminated its face. Sarah's breath caught in her throat. It wasn't human. Its eyes were hollow, dark voids that seemed to, to absorb the light, and its mouth was twisted into a grotesque grin. Just as it reached for her, something slammed against the door with a force that shook the entire cabin. The creature turned, a snarl escaping its lips. There was another crash, this time from the front of the cabin. Then silence. The figure seemed to hesitate, its grin fading. Slowly, it backed away, retreating into the shadows. A moment later, it was gone, leaving behind only the sound of Sarah's ragged breathing. She stayed frozen in place for what felt like hours, too terrified to move. When she finally mustered the courage to leave the bedroom, the cabin was empty. The front door was wide open, hanging off its hinges. There was no sign of the creature, no indication that it had ever been there. But the sense of being watched, of something lurking just out of sight, never left her. Sarah didn't wait until morning. She grabbed her things, got into her car, and drove away as fast as she could, never looking back. But even as she sped down the dark, winding road, she couldn't shake the feeling that something was following her, lurking just beyond the edge of the headlights. It wasn't until she reached the safety of the city that she finally allowed herself to breathe. But deep down, she knew she would never be the same. The shadowy figure, the tapping, the growl, those were things she could never forget. And she couldn't help but wonder if one day it would find her again. After all, the cabin was still out there, waiting. The Echoes of Hollow Creek. Ethan had always been drawn to stories of the supernatural. So when he heard about the old cabin at Hollow Creek, a place rumored to be haunted, he knew he had to experience it for himself. The cabin was nestled deep in the woods, far from the nearest town, and had been abandoned for decades. The stories about it were as chilling as they were intriguing, filled with tales of strange noises, ghostly apparitions, and people who had vanished without a trace. Ethan arrived at the cabin on a crisp autumn afternoon. The sun was setting, casting long shadows through the trees as he approached. The cabin was exactly as he had imagined, weathered with sagging timbers and a roof covered in moss. It looked like something straight out of a horror movie. He took a deep breath, excitement mingling with a twinge of apprehension, and unlocked the door. Inside, the cabin was dusty and filled with cobwebs. A layer of grime covered the furniture, and the air was stale. Ethan set up his gear, an old journal for taking notes, a camera for documenting any unusual activity, and a flashlight. He was here to explore, to experience the legend of Hollow Creek firsthand. As night fell, Ethan settled in for the evening. He lit a fire in the fireplace, hoping to chase away the chill and the eerie silence that seemed to pervade the cabin. He read through old local legends he had brought with him, growing increasingly fascinated by the history of the place. According to the stories, the cabin had once been the home of a reclusive hermit who had disappeared under mysterious circumstances. Around midnight, Ethan began to hear faint noises, a soft, rhythmic thumping that seemed to come from beneath the cabin. He dismissed it as the settling of old timbers, or perhaps the wind moving through the floorboards. But the noises grew louder, more distinct, and he couldn't ignore them any longer. Curious and a bit unnerved, he grabbed his flashlight and ventured downstairs to investigate. The basement was dark and musty, filled with old crates and forgotten relics. The thumping was now accompanied by a low, mournful wail that sent shivers down his spine. Ethan's flashlight beam swept across the room, illuminating old tools and rusted equipment, but nothing out of the ordinary. He followed the sound to a section of the floor where the boards seemed slightly uneven. With some effort, he pried up a loose board and discovered a small, dirt-covered hatch. His heart raced with a mix of fear and excitement. What was hidden beneath? He opened the hatch and descended into a narrow, stone-lined tunnel. The air was cold and damp, and the walls seemed to close in on him as he made his way forward. The wailing grew louder, more intense. Ethan's flashlight flickered casting eerie shadows that danced along the walls. 
At the end of the tunnel, he found a small, dimly lit chamber. The source of the wailing was immediately clear. A decayed and long-abandoned altar stood in the center of the room, surrounded by strange symbols and old candles. The wail seemed to emanate from the altar itself, resonating through the cold stone. Ethan approached the altar, his flashlight illuminating faded markings on the walls and a weathered book lying open on the altar. The book's pages were yellowed with age, filled with cryptic writings and disturbing illustrations. As he flipped through the pages, the wailing grew more insistent, almost as if reacting to his presence. One of the illustrations caught his eye. A drawing of a figure standing in front of a cabin, its face obscured by shadow. The figure seemed eerily familiar, and Ethan couldn't shake the feeling that he had seen it before. He continued reading, his eyes widening as he uncovered details of a ritual intended to bind a malevolent spirit. The last entry was a warning. Those who awaken the spirit shall be its vessel, forever bound to the echoes of Hollow Creek. Suddenly, the wailing stopped. The chamber fell into an unnatural silence. Ethan's flashlight flickered out, plunging him into darkness. Panic set in as he fumbled for his backup light. When he finally got it working, he saw that the symbols on the walls had changed. They now appeared as though they were moving, shifting, and writhing in the dim light. A cold breeze blew through the chamber, and Ethan felt a presence behind him. He turned to find a shadowy figure standing in the entrance of the tunnel. The figure was tall, with hollow eyes and an unsettling grin. It was the same figure from the drawing. Ethan's heart pounded as he stumbled backward, his flashlight flickering wildly. The figure advanced slowly, its eyes fixed on him. Ethan turned and fled, scrambling back through the tunnel and up the stairs, his breath coming in ragged gasps. When he emerged into the basement, he bolted the hatch behind him and raced up to the main floor, slamming the cabin door shut. The air was heavy with the scent of smoke from the fireplace, and the cabin was eerily quiet. Ethan tried to steady his breathing, but the sense of being watched never left him. He spent the rest of the night huddled by the fire, too terrified to sleep. When dawn finally broke, he packed up his things and left the cabin, determined never to return. Years later, Ethan would often look back on that night with a mix of fear and fascination. He had tried to tell others about his experience, but the stories always seemed to fade into the realm of urban legend. The cabin at Hollow Creek remained abandoned, a place where the echoes of the past continued to linger. Every so often he would hear of others who had ventured into the woods and never returned. The locals spoke in hushed tones of the malevolent spirit that roamed the area, waiting for its next vessel. Ethan knew firsthand the truth of those tales. The echoes of Hollow Creek were not just stories, they were a warning, a reminder of the darkness that lay hidden in the depths of the old cabin. And sometimes late at night, when the wind howled through the trees and the darkness pressed in around him, Ethan would hear that mournful wail once more, reminding him of the night he had faced the echoes of Hollow Creek and barely escaped with his life. The Whispers of Blackwood Lodge The brochure for Blackwood Lodge had promised a secluded retreat, a chance to escape from the world's chaos and reconnect with nature. Nestled in the heart of the dense Blackwood Forest, the lodge was a sprawling estate with Gothic architecture, centuries-old trees, and an air of timeless elegance. For Lucy, a city dweller, craving solitude and inspiration for her writing, it seemed perfect. When she arrived, the lodge was even more magnificent than she had imagined. Its dark stone walls, intricately carved wooden beams, and towering spires gave it a majestic yet foreboding presence. The caretaker, an elderly man named Mr. Thorne, welcomed her with a smile that didn't quite reach his eyes. He handed her an antique key and gave her a brief tour before leaving her to her solitude. The first night was uneventful. Lucy settled into the grand library, a room lined with dusty old books and lit by a large, ornate chandelier. The silence was profound, broken only by the occasional creak of the building settling in the distant hoot of an owl. She wrote for hours, finding the lodge's eerie atmosphere oddly inspiring. But as she was preparing for bed, she noticed something odd. A faint, almost imperceptible whispering coming from the corners of the room. She dismissed it as the wind or her imagination playing tricks on her, but the whispers continued, a soft murmur that seemed to swirl around her. Determined to enjoy her retreat, 
Lucy shrugged off her unease and went to bed. The next morning, she awoke to a strange sight. The heavy drapes in her bedroom were drawn, although she was certain she had left them open. The whispers from the night before lingered in her mind, a faint echo she couldn't quite shake. As days passed, the whispers grew more pronounced, especially during the night. Lucy began to hear them more clearly, as if they were coming from within the walls themselves. She would catch fragments of phrases, find the truth, the key, don't trust, but they were always cut off before she could fully understand them. One evening, while exploring the lodge's extensive grounds, Lucy stumbled upon a small, overgrown garden at the rear of the property. Hidden among the weeds was a stone statue of a woman with hollow eyes. Beside it was an old, rusted key embedded in the ground. The key matched the antique one Mr. Thorne had given her, though it was slightly different in design. Curiosity piqued, Lucy took the key inside and examined it closely. It had strange engravings on it, symbols she didn't recognize. She began to suspect that there might be something hidden within the lodge, something the whispers were guiding her toward. That night, as the whispers grew more urgent, Lucy decided to investigate. She wandered through the lodge, using the key to unlock various doors and cabinets. Her search led her to the cellar, a place she had avoided until now due to its oppressive darkness and musty smell. The cellar was filled with old furniture and crates, but Lucy's attention was drawn to a large, ornate chest in the corner. It had the same symbols as the key engraved on its surface. With trembling hands, she used the key to unlock it. Inside the chest was a collection of old letters and a journal. The letters were dated from over a century ago and spoke of a family living in the lodge, wealthy, influential, but plagued by misfortune. The journal belonged to the family's daughter, Eleanor, who had written of strange occurrences and whispers in the night. Eleanor's final entry described a ritual she had uncovered, a dark ceremony intended to bind a spirit to the lodge. According to the journal, the spirit was trapped within the walls, its presence only detectable by those who were sensitive to its whispers. Eleanor had tried to reverse the ritual, but was ultimately consumed by the spirit's malevolence. The final passage was a desperate plea. The key is hidden where the shadows fall longest. Beware the whispers. They are the spirit's lie. Lucy's blood ran cold. The whispers that had seemed so benign were a manifestation of the spirit's influence. She had unwittingly become entangled in its web. The whispers grew louder, more insistent, as if reacting to her discovery. The cellar seemed to close in on her, the temperature dropping rapidly. Lucy hurriedly gathered the letters and the journal, determined to leave the lodge before it was too late. As she made her way back to the main floor, the whispers turned into a cacophony of voices, screaming and wailing in desperation. The walls seemed to shift and pulse, and the shadows danced in unnatural patterns. Lucy reached the front door, but it was locked tight, the key now useless in her trembling hands. Panic set in as she realized she was trapped. The whispers grew more frenzied, and the shadows seemed to converge upon her. She felt a cold presence behind her, its icy breath on the back of her neck. In a final desperate act, Lucy threw the journal and letters into the fireplace and set them ablaze, and hoping to destroy whatever was binding the spirit. As the flames consumed the documents, the whispers reached a deafening crescendo. The temperature dropped further, and the lights flickered violently. Just as Lucy thought she would be overwhelmed by the darkness, the fire blazed brighter, and the shadows seemed to recoil. With a final surge of strength, Lucy managed to force the front door open. She fled into the night, leaving the lodge and its horrors behind her. As she drove away, the whispers gradually faded, replaced by the eerie silence of the forest. Lucy never spoke of her experience at Blackwood Lodge, but the terror she felt lingered long after she left. The whispers of the lodge became a haunting reminder of the darkness she had encountered and the malevolent spirit she had narrowly escaped. Years later, the lodge remained abandoned, its secrets buried within its walls. Some say the whispers still echo through the empty rooms, waiting for the next unwary soul to uncover them. Lucy, now living a quieter life, never forgot the night she faced the whispers of Blackwood Lodge and barely escaped with her sanity intact. The Haunting of Miller's Retreat The small town of Pinebrook had always been a place where legends and ghost stories thrived, 
Among them, the tale of Miller's retreat stood out. The old estate, perched on a hill overlooking the town, had been abandoned for decades, its grandeur fading into a state of disrepair. It was said to be haunted by the spirit of its last resident, Margaret Miller, a wealthy woman who had disappeared under mysterious circumstances. When Rachel, an amateur paranormal investigator, learned about Miller's retreat, she was intrigued. Her fascination with the supernatural and her desire to document her findings for her blog led her to Pinebrook. She booked a weekend stay at the estate, armed with her camera, voice recorder, and an assortment of ghost hunting equipment. Rachel arrived at Miller's retreat on a cloudy autumn afternoon. The estate loomed over her, its once elegant facade now covered in ivy and grime. The iron gate creaked open as she approached, and the wind howled through the trees, setting an ominous tone. She entered the estate, the heavy wooden door groaning on its hinges. Inside, the mansion was a maze of dusty rooms and cobweb-covered furniture. The air was thick with the scent of mildew and decay. Rachel set up her equipment in the grand parlor, where she planned to spend most of her time. She started by documenting the condition of the house, capturing photos and recording the eerie silence. As night fell, Rachel began her investigation in earnest. She conducted an EVP electronic voice phenomena session in the parlor, asking questions into the darkness. The only response was the occasional creak of the house and the distant moan of the wind. Undeterred, she decided to explore the upper floors, hoping to find something more concrete. The second floor was lined with bedrooms, each one filled with the remnants of a bygone era. In one room, she found a dusty mirror with a gilded frame, and in another, a faded portrait of Margaret Miller. The woman's eyes seemed to follow her, and Rachel felt a chill run down her spine. She made a mental note to return to this room later. As she continued her exploration, Rachel's flashlight flickered, casting eerie shadows on the walls. The temperature in the house dropped significantly, and she began to feel a sense of unease. In one of the upstairs corridors, she heard the soft sound of footsteps behind her. She turned, but there was no one there. Returning to the parlor, Rachel reviewed the EVP recordings. There were faint, almost imperceptible sounds, whispers that she couldn't quite make out. Frustrated but determined, she decided to try a different approach. She set up a night vision camera in the parlor and planned to spend the night there, hoping to capture something on film. The hours passed slowly and the mansion was eerily quiet. Rachel dozed off in her chair, only to be awakened by a sudden noise. It sounded like a door slamming shut. She checked her equipment and saw that the night vision camera had recorded movement in the parlor. The footage showed a dark, indistinct figure moving across the room. Rachel's excitement was tempered by a growing sense of dread. She reviewed the footage, looking for any clue as to what the figure might be. The movement was erratic, almost as if it were searching for something. The figure seemed to approach the portrait of Margaret Miller, then vanish. Determined to uncover more, Rachel returned to the portrait room. The temperature had dropped even further, and she noticed that the air was growing heavy. The mirror she had seen earlier now seemed to emit a faint ghostly glow. She approached it cautiously, her heart pounding in her chest. As she examined the mirror, she noticed a faint inscription etched into the frame. It read, The truth lies behind the glass. Rachel's curiosity was piqued. She ran her fingers along the inscription, but the mirror remained opaque, revealing only her reflection. Suddenly, the air in the room grew icy cold, and Rachel's breath formed visible clouds. The whispering began again, more urgent this time, as if pleading for her to listen. She could make out a few words, Help me. Find me. In a burst of determination, Rachel pressed her ear against the mirror, trying to hear more clearly. To her shock, the mirror began to ripple, like water disturbed by a stone. She stepped back, her eyes wide with fear and fascination. The surface of the mirror began to swirl and distort, revealing a hidden compartment behind it. Rachel's hands shook as she pried open the compartment, revealing a small, ornate box. Inside the box was a bundle of letters tied with a ribbon. Rachel carefully untied the ribbon and unfolded the letters. They were written by Margaret Miller and detailed a tragic story of betrayal and murder. Margaret had discovered that her husband was plotting to kill her to claim her fortune. The letters described her desperate attempts to escape 
and her ultimate realization that her husband had trapped her in the estate's secret chamber. The final letter was a plea for help. If anyone finds these letters, know that my spirit is trapped here. I am bound by the betrayal of those I loved. Please, free me. As Rachel read the letters, the whispers grew louder, converging into a coherent message. Thank you. Free us. Rachel realized that Margaret's spirit was trapped in the mirror, bound by the dark deeds of the past. Determined to honor Margaret's final wish, Rachel conducted a ritual described in the letters to release the spirit. The air in the room grew warmer, and the whispers began to fade. As the ritual concluded, the mirror's surface returned to normal, and the oppressive atmosphere lifted. Rachel felt a profound sense of relief and accomplishment. She packed up her equipment, leaving Miller's retreat behind with a mixture behind with a mixture of sadness and satisfaction. Rachel never returned to Pinebrook, but the story of her encounter at Miller's retreat became a prominent feature of her blog. The estate, now rumored to be free of its haunting presence, remained a silent testament to the dark history it had once held. And though Rachel moved on, the whispers of Miller's retreat would forever be etched in her memory, a chilling reminder of the past and the spirit that had finally found peace. The Forgotten Cabin Deep in the heart of the Appalachian Mountains, beyond the reach of well-trodden trails and surrounded by dense forest, lay an old cabin known as the Forgotten Cabin. The stories about the cabin were as murky as the mist that clung to the surrounding trees. Locals spoke in hushed tones about the place, recounting tales of vanished hikers and eerie lights that flickered through the windows on moonless nights. When Julia, a seasoned nature photographer, decided to spend a week in the mountains to capture its untouched beauty, she chose the cabin despite the warnings. Drawn by its isolation and the promise of breathtaking landscapes, she was determined to prove that the stories were nothing more than local folklore. On the first day, Julia arrived at the cabin as the sun dipped below the horizon. The building was as she had imagined, weathered and forlorn, with peeling paint and an overgrown yard. The surrounding forest was thick with shadows, and the air was cool and heavy with the scent of pine. She spent the evening setting up her gear and exploring the nearby trails. The forest was serene, save for the occasional rustle of leaves or distant call of a bird. As darkness fell, she returned to the cabin, lit a fire in the old hearth, and prepared a simple dinner. The cabin creaked and groaned, but Julia found the sounds comforting, a reminder of the solitude she sought. That night, Julia's sleep was interrupted by faint noises, scratching sounds coming from the walls. Groggy and disoriented, she dismissed them as the result of settling timbers or perhaps small animals outside. Yet the noises persisted, and when she awoke, she found that her equipment had been rearranged, though she was certain she had left everything in place. The following day, she ventured deeper into the forest, hoping to capture some stunning shots of the rugged landscape. As she hiked, she noticed that the trees seemed to grow denser, the shadows longer. The forest was silent, save for the crunch of leaves underfoot. Every now and then, she felt a prickling sensation on the back of her neck, as though she was being watched. When she returned to the cabin, she found it colder than before. The fire in the hearth had dwindled to embers, and a strange draft swept through the rooms. The scratching sounds returned that night, louder and more urgent. Julia lay in bed, staring at the darkened ceiling, trying to ignore the feeling that something was very wrong. On the third night, the disturbances escalated. The scratching turned into pounding, echoing through the walls and floorboards. Julia could no longer ignore it. With her flashlight in hand, she explored the cabin's darkened corners, searching for the source of the noise. She discovered an old trapdoor hidden beneath a threadbare rug in the living room. Heart pounding, she pried open the trapdoor and found a narrow staircase leading down into the darkness. The air that wafted up from the cellar was damp and musty. Julia hesitated for a moment before descending the steps, the beam of her flashlight revealing the walls of a small stone-lined room beneath the cabin. The room was filled with old, dusty furniture and boxes. Julia's flashlight beam swept over the objects, illuminating a large old mirror leaning against the wall. The mirror was ornate, but covered in a thick layer of dust. As she approached it, she noticed something peculiar. Her reflection seemed, seemed to flicker and shift unnaturally, 
as though it was struggling to align with the real world. As Julia reached out to wipe the dust from the mirror, the temperature in the room dropped. Play. Her breath came out in visible puffs, and the air grew heavy with an inexplicable sense of dread. The scratching sounds intensified, now coming from behind the walls of the cellar. Julia turned to see a shadow moving behind her in the mirror. It was a figure, a dark silhouette with hollow eyes, standing in the room behind her. Her heart raced as she spun around, but the cellar was empty. When she looked back at the mirror, the shadow was gone. She tried to calm herself, but her hands were shaking. She moved away from the mirror and began searching through the boxes, hoping to find some clue about the cabin's history. Among the old papers and forgotten trinkets, she found a journal with a faded leather cover. The entries, written in a shaky hand, spoke of a man named Elijah who had once lived in the cabin. Elijah's entries described his descent into madness. He wrote about strange noises and shadows that seemed to move of their own accord. He spoke of a mirror that was cursed, one that trapped the souls of those who gazed into it for too long. The final entry was a frantic scrawl. The mirror holds them. The cabin is their prison. They must be freed. A cold wind blew through the cellar, and Julia felt a chill run down her spine. The pounding noises from the walls were now accompanied by anguished cries and whispers. In a surge of panic, Julia grabbed the journal and raced back up the stairs, slamming the trapdoor shut behind her. That night, the disturbances reached a fever pitch. The cabin shook with the force of unseen forces battering the walls. Julia, terrified and desperate, gathered her things and prepared to leave. But when she tried to open the door, it wouldn't budge. The cabin seemed to be holding her prisoner. As the night wore on, Julia felt a presence in the room with her. The whispers grew louder, the voices desperate and pleading. The shadows on the walls twisted and writhed, and the mirror in the cellar seemed to glow with a ghostly light. The cabin's old wooden beams groaned and creaked, as though the structure itself was alive. In a final act of desperation, Julia grabbed a fire poker and smashed the mirror into pieces. The room was filled with a blinding light and a deafening roar. When the noise subsided, Julia found herself alone in the darkened cabin, the whispers now silent. The door opened with ease, and Julia fled into the forest, not looking back. She didn't stop until she reached the nearest town, where she recounted her harrowing experience to the locals. They listened with a mix of disbelief and sympathy, and one of them mentioned that Elijah had been a recluse who had disappeared years ago, leaving the cabin to rot. Julia never returned to the cabin, and it was eventually reclaimed by the forest. The stories of the forgotten cabin faded into legend, with whispers of its haunting becoming part of local folklore. Julia's experience remained a chilling reminder of the darkness that can lie hidden in even the most picturesque settings. Kasha Shraj, The Haunting of Old Pine Lodge It had been years since anyone had lived in Old Pine Lodge, a grand yet decrepit estate deep within the isolated reaches of Pinewood Forest. Overgrown with vines and enveloped by an oppressive stillness, the lodge was a relic of a bygone era, rumored to be haunted by its previous occupants. Despite its sinister reputation, the place drew the interest of the adventurous and the curious. When Chris, a young documentary filmmaker fascinated by ghost stories, decided to spend a weekend at Old Pine Lodge, he expected to uncover just another tale of local legend. Armed with his camera and a healthy skepticism, he arrived at the lodge on a cold October afternoon. The estate loomed ahead, its once grand facade now marred by decay. The inside of the lodge was as foreboding as the outside. Dust-covered furniture, cobwebs in the corners, and creaky floorboards gave the impression that time had stopped the moment its last inhabitant had left. Chris set up his equipment, planning to film a documentary on the lodge's ghost stories. His initial exploration was uneventful, with nothing more alarming than the occasional creak or gust of wind through the broken windows. That night, as Chris reviewed his footage, he noticed something strange, an unexplained shadow flitting across one of the frames. Dismissing it as a trick of the light or a flaw in his equipment, he continued working. But as the hours passed, the feeling of being watched grew stronger. The temperature in the lodge dropped noticeably, and an oppressive silence settled over the estate. In the dead of night, Chris was jolted awake by a loud bang coming from the basement. Groggy and disoriented, 
He grabbed his flashlight and descended the stairs. The basement was even colder than the rest of the house, and the air was thick with mustiness. As he swept his flashlight over the room, he saw nothing out of the ordinary, old boxes, broken furniture, and forgotten relics. But then he noticed something odd, a door hidden behind a stack of crates. He didn't remember seeing it before. Curiosity peaked, Chris moved the crates aside and opened the door. It revealed a narrow staircase leading further down into the darkness. Taking a deep breath, Chris descended the stairs. The air grew colder and more oppressive with each step. At the bottom, he found a small dimly lit room lined with shelves holding old books and strange artifacts. In the center of the room was a large, ornate mirror with a tarnished frame. The mirror seemed oddly out of place in the otherwise dusty room. He approached the mirror, and as he did, the temperature dropped even further. His breath formed visible puffs in the freezing air. As he examined the mirror, he noticed that his reflection seemed to waver and distort. He chalked it up to the poor condition of the glass, but an unsettling feeling crept over him. Suddenly, a gust of icy wind swept through the room, extinguishing his flashlight. Panic set in as Chris fumbled for his backup light. When the beam flickered on, the room was filled with an eerie, ghostly glow. Shadows seemed to dance across the walls and the whispers began, a soft, sorrowful murmuring that seemed to come from all directions. The whispers grew louder, more insistent, and Chris felt a cold presence behind him. He turned to find the mirror's surface rippling as though disturbed by some unseen force. Then, the reflection in the mirror changed. Instead of his own face, Chris saw a shadowy figure standing in the room behind him. Heart pounding, Chris spun around, but the room was empty. When he looked back at the mirror, the figure was gone. The whispers grew more frantic and the temperature plummeted. Chris felt a chilling touch on his shoulder and turned to see a dark shape emerging from the shadows. Desperate to escape, Chris scrambled back up the stairs. The whispers followed him, growing louder and more desperate. As he reached the main floor, the house seemed to come alive with movement. Doors slammed shut and the wind howled through the broken windows. Chris grabbed his camera and ran outside, but the forest was shrouded in an unnatural fog. The path to his car was obscured, and he felt disoriented. He stumbled through the fog, his breath coming in ragged gasps, the whispers still echoing in his ears. Eventually he reached his car and drove away from the lodge as fast as he could, not daring to look back. The whispers and the cold presence haunted him even after he left Pinewood Forest. He spent the rest of the night in a roadside motel, too shaken to sleep. The next morning, Chris returned to the lodge with a police escort, but the place was eerily quiet. The basement was undisturbed, and the mirror was gone. There was no sign of the strange occurrences he had experienced. The police found nothing out of the ordinary and dismissed his claims as stress-induced hallucinations. Determined to find answers, Chris reviewed his footage from the previous night. To his shock, the video showed no signs of the shadowy figure or the whispers. It was as if the events he had witnessed had been erased from reality itself. The lodge remained abandoned, its reputation as a haunted place only adding to its allure. Chris never returned, and the experience remained a chilling mystery. The whispers of Old Pine Lodge became a local legend, with some saying that the spirits trapped within the mirror had found a new way to make their presence known. For Chris, the haunting of Old Pine Lodge was a reminder of the thin veil between reality and the unknown. The whispers he heard were not just echoes of the past, but a warning of the dark, the whispering pines. In the remote reaches of the Colorado Rockies, there stood an ancient cabin known as Whispering Pines. The cabin, surrounded by towering pines and cloaked in a perpetual mist, had been abandoned for decades. Local folklore painted it as a place of dread, where eerie voices were said to drift through the trees at night and where travelers had vanished without a trace. When Sarah, a young journalist with a taste for the macabre, heard about Whispering Pines, she was both intrigued and skeptical. She had made a career out of debunking supernatural claims, and this was just another opportunity to confirm her suspicions or uncover something truly unsettling. Armed with her camera and a notepad, she set out to investigate. Arriving at the cabin just before dusk, Sarah felt a shiver of anticipation. The building was as described, weather-beaten and forlorn, with a sagging roof and broken windows. 
she unpacked her gear and began her exploration. The inside of the cabin was even more eerie than the exterior. Dust-covered furniture, faded photographs, and rotting wooden beams gave the impression of a place frozen in time. As night fell, Sarah set up her equipment in the main room. She lit a small fire in the old fireplace to chase away the chill and provide some light. The forest outside was cloaked in darkness, with only the occasional hoot of an owl breaking the silence. The first night passed uneventfully. Sarah reviewed her footage and wrote notes, noting the cabin's creaks and groans. She dismissed the sounds as the natural noises of an old building. But as she settled into bed, she couldn't shake the feeling that she was being watched. The whispers she had heard about seemed more like figments of her imagination. Around midnight, she was woken by a soft, almost imperceptible murmur. It was as though someone was whispering just beyond the edge of hearing. The sound was intermittent and seemed to come from different parts of the cabin. Sarah's flashlight revealed nothing out of the ordinary, and she convinced herself it was merely the wind playing tricks. The next day, Sarah ventured into the surrounding forest to gather footage of the area. The woods were dense and silent, the kind of silence that seemed to absorb all sound. As she walked, she felt a growing sense of unease, as though the trees were closing in on her. She tried to ignore it, focusing instead on capturing the eerie beauty of the forest. Returning to the cabin, Sarah discovered something odd. The photographs she had taken were missing from her camera's memory card, replaced by a single ominous image, a blurry, shadowy figure standing in the doorway of the cabin. She was sure she hadn't taken such a picture. The figure seemed to be moving, its outline shifting as though it was alive. That night, the whispers returned, louder and more persistent. They seemed to coalesce into discernible words. Come closer. Find the truth. He waits. The whispers seemed to come from all directions, echoing through the walls and floorboards. Determined to uncover the source, Sarah began to search the cabin more thoroughly. In the basement, she found an old journal hidden behind a loose brick in the wall. The journal belonged to a man named James Whitaker, who had once lived in the cabin. His entries detailed his descent into madness, describing how he began hearing whispers that drove him to paranoia and fear. The final entry was particularly chilling. The voices are getting louder. They want me to find something, something buried beneath the cabin. I must uncover it, or they will take me. As Sarah read the journal, the whispers grew more frantic, and the temperature in the cabin plummeted. Shadows seemed to shift and move around her. Driven by a mix of fear and curiosity, she decided to follow the journal's clues. The entry mentioned a hidden compartment beneath the cabin. With a flashlight in hand, Sarah searched the floorboards and found a loose section near the fireplace. She pried it open, revealing a small, dust-covered box. Inside the box were several old letters and a small, intricately carved wooden figurine. The letters were from James Whitaker to a woman named Eliza, his fiancée. They spoke of a secret he had discovered, a ritual that could supposedly grant eternal life but required a terrible sacrifice. The final letter revealed that the ritual had gone awry, trapping his soul in the cabin and ensuring he would be bound to it forever. As Sarah read the letters, the whispers became a cacophony of voices, pleading and demanding. The wooden figurine seemed to pulse with an unnatural energy. Sarah's flashlight flickered, casting erratic shadows that danced across the walls. Suddenly, the whispers coalesced into a single, commanding voice. You have what I seek. Give it to me, or join me. Panic surged through Sarah. She grabbed the letters and the figurine, racing back upstairs. The cabin seemed to come alive with movement. The walls groaned and the floorboards creaked ominously. Shadows converged upon her and the temperature dropped further. In a frantic attempt to escape, Sarah fled the cabin and ran into the forest. The whispers following her. The forest was now shrouded in an unnatural fog, making it difficult to find her way. She stumbled through the trees, her flashlight cutting through the thick haze. As she finally reached the edge of the forest and emerged onto a road, she glanced back. The cabin was visible through the fog, its windows glowing with an eerie light. The whispers faded as she drove away, but the sense of being pursued lingered. Sarah never returned to Whispering Pines. The footage she captured that night remained a chilling reminder of her experience. 
The journal and the figurine were locked away, their secrets left unresolved. Whispering Pines continued to stand as a dark monument to the unknown, its whispers forever haunting the woods of the Colorado Rockies. The local legends of the cabin grew, with stories of those who ventured too close and heard the whispers of the trapped souls. Whispering Pines became a symbol of the thin boundary between the living and the dead, a place where the voices of the past were forever bound to the forest. The Light at Devil's Ridge Nestled in the rugged terrain of the Oregon wilderness, Devil's Ridge was a place feared and avoided by locals. The legend spoke of strange lights that appeared on the ridge at night, leading those who saw them into the darkness, never to return. The forest surrounding the ridge was dense and unnervingly quiet, and the only sound was the whispering wind through the trees. Emily, an aspiring urban explorer with a penchant for unraveling mysteries, decided to investigate Devil's Ridge. She had heard the stories, but was determined to uncover the truth behind the lights and the eerie reputation of the ridge. Armed with her camera, flashlight, and a sense of adventure, she set out on a crisp autumn evening. The hike to Devil's Ridge was arduous, with the trail overgrown and barely visible. As the sun set, the forest transformed into a labyrinth of shadows. Emily set up camp at a clearing near the base of the ridge, hoping to catch the lights that were rumored to appear. As darkness fell, Emily was enveloped by an eerie silence. The only sound was the crackling of her campfire. She watched the ridge, waiting for any sign of the mysterious lights. Hours passed with no sign of anything unusual, and Emily began to doubt the stories she had heard. Just as she was about to give up and head to bed, a faint glow appeared on the ridge. It was a soft, flickering light, moving slowly among the trees. Emily's heart raced with excitement. She grabbed her camera and flashlight, determined to capture evidence of the phenomenon. She followed the light up the ridge, carefully navigating the rocky terrain. The glow seemed to beckon her, drifting through the forest as if guiding her. Emily felt a mix of exhilaration and unease as she pushed deeper into the woods. The forest grew darker, and the trees seemed to close in around her. After what felt like hours, Emily reached a small, abandoned cabin on the ridge. The light was now brighter, emanating from within the cabin. She approached cautiously, her flashlight casting long shadows across the dilapidated structure. The cabin was old and weather-beaten, with broken windows and a door that hung loosely on its hinges. Emily pushed the door open and stepped inside. The light seemed to be coming from a small lantern on a rickety wooden table in the center of the room. The lantern's flame flickered, casting eerie shadows on the walls. As she approached the lantern, Emily noticed something strange. The walls of the cabin were covered in faded, disturbing sketches, images of twisted faces, shadowy figures, and cryptic symbols. Her unease grew as she examined them, but she couldn't shake the feeling that she was being watched. Suddenly, the lantern's light flickered violently, and the cabin grew cold. Emily's breath became visible, and a deep, unsettling silence filled the room. The shadows on the walls seemed to come alive, writhing and twisting into grotesque shapes. Emily heard a faint whisper, barely audible over the sound of her pounding heart. The whisper grew louder, forming words that seemed to echo through the cabin. Leave now. They are coming. Panic surged through her. She turned to leave, but the door slammed shut with a deafening bang. The lantern's light dimmed and the shadows converged upon her. Emily fumbled with the door, but it wouldn't budge. The whispers grew more frantic and the temperature dropped even further. The cabin seemed to close in on her, the walls vibrating with an otherworldly energy. Emily's flashlight flickered and went out, plunging her into darkness. In the pitch black, Emily felt a cold, invisible presence surrounding her. The whispers grew louder, more urgent, and the cabin seemed to pulse with a malevolent force. Desperate to escape, she searched for another exit, but the walls were solid and unyielding. Suddenly, the lantern's light flared back to life, illuminating a figure standing in the doorway. It was a spectral figure, translucent, and wreathed in shadow. The figure's eyes were hollow, and its mouth moved in silent, desperate pleas. Emily's terror reached a peak as the figure reached out towards her. She felt an icy grip on her arm, pulling her towards the lantern. The light seemed to grow brighter, and the shadows around her became more frenzied. In a final act of desperation, Emily grabbed the lantern and hurled it at the walls. 
The glass shattered, and the flame was extinguished. The room was plunged into darkness once more. The cabin seemed to shudder and groan, and the oppressive presence vanished. The door swung open, and Emily stumbled out into the night. She fled down the ridge, her heart pounding and her mind racing. When she finally reached her campsite, she looked back at the ridge. The light was gone, and the forest was silent once more. Emily packed her things and left Devil's Ridge, never looking back. The next day, local authorities investigated the area but found no sign of the cabin or any unusual phenomena. Emily's footage was incomplete and showed only fragmented images of the forest. Her experience at Devil's Ridge became a chilling tale of a place where reality and the supernatural intertwined, leaving those who ventured too close with an unforgettable, terrifying encounter. Emily never spoke of her experience again, but the legend of Devil's Ridge grew. It was said that the ridge was a place where lost souls were forever trapped, their whispers guiding the unwary to their doom. The lights, once a beacon, were now a haunting reminder of the darkness that lurked in the shadows of the forest. Um, the cabin at Blackwood Falls. The Blackwood Falls cabin had long been abandoned, a forgotten relic nestled deep within the forest of the Pacific Northwest. Locals told tales of strange occurrences and vanishings linked to the cabin, but the stories were often dismissed as superstition. The cabin's reputation grew as a place where reality seemed to warp, with people reporting odd sensations and inexplicable events. When Lucas, a curious historian and paranormal enthusiast, decided to spend a weekend in the cabin, he saw it as an opportunity to debunk the myths surrounding it. Armed with his camera, recorder, and a notebook, he aimed to uncover the truth behind the cabin's dark reputation. He arrived at the cabin just as twilight was settling in. The structure was as he had imagined, weathered and decrepit, with ivy crawling up its sides and a roof sagging with age. Despite the setting sun casting long, eerie shadows, Lucas felt a thrill of excitement rather than fear. Inside, the cabin was filled with dusty furniture and old, cobweb-covered trinkets. The air was stale, and the floorboards creaked ominously underfoot. Lucas set up his equipment in the living room and began documenting the interior. He noticed peculiar features, ancient, faded symbols etched into the walls, and strange markings on the floor that seemed to form a ritualistic pattern. As night fell, Lucas lit a lantern and began his investigation. He walked through the rooms, capturing footage and speaking into his recorder. The cabin seemed to be holding its breath, the silence broken only by the occasional creak of wood or the rustle of leaves outside. Around midnight, Lucas heard a faint whispering sound. It was barely audible, but unmistakably present. The whispering seemed to come from the walls, and the temperature in the cabin dropped abruptly. Lucas's breath became visible, and the lantern flickered ominously. He turned on his audio recorder, hoping to capture any unusual sounds. The whispering grew louder and more insistent, though the words were indistinguishable. Lucas moved towards the source of the sound, which seemed to be coming from the basement. The basement stairs were narrow and steep, and as Lucas descended, he felt a growing sense of unease. The air was colder, and a palpable sense of dread hung over the space. At the bottom of the stairs, he found a large, old trunk sitting in the center of the room. The trunk was covered in dust and cobwebs, and it was bound with rusty chains. With a sense of trepidation, Lucas opened the trunk. Inside, he found old journals and documents, their pages yellowed and brittle. He began to sift through them, discovering they belonged to a man named Edgar Blackwood, the original owner of the cabin. The journals detailed strange experiments and rituals, along with disturbing accounts of how the boundary between the physical world and another realm had been blurred. The final entries were particularly unsettling. Edgar wrote of a powerful ritual that had gone awry, causing the cabin to become a nexus for dark forces. He described how the whispers were the voices of trapped souls, seeking to cross over and claim the living. The last entry ended abruptly with a frantic note. The boundary weakens. They are coming for me. I must complete the ritual or be consumed. As Lucas read the journals, the whispers intensified, growing louder and more frantic. Shadows seemed to move in the corners of the basement, and the air grew thick, with an oppressive presence. The lantern flickered erratically, casting long, writhing shadows on the walls. 
Suddenly, the trunk slammed shut on its own, and Lucas was plunged into darkness as the lantern went out. He fumbled for his flashlight, his hands shaking. When he turned it on, he saw the basement was no longer as he remembered. The walls were covered in the same symbols he had seen earlier, and the shadows seemed to reach out towards him. The whispers became a cacophony of voices, each one pleading, demanding, and threatening. Lucas felt a cold, invisible force pressing down on him, and the temperature plummeted even further. The basement seemed to stretch and warp, its dimensions shifting as though it was no longer bound by the laws of reality. Desperate to escape, Lucas raced up the stairs, but the door to the basement slammed shut behind him. The cabin seemed to come alive with movement. The walls groaned and shifted, and the floorboards buckled as though trying to trap him. The whispers grew louder, their voices merging into a single, horrifying chant. Lucas stumbled through the darkened room, searching for an exit. The shadows converged upon him, their forms twisting and writhing. He felt an icy grip on his arm, and the whispers seemed to echo in his mind, urging him to join them. In a final frantic attempt to escape, Lucas grabbed his camera and captured footage of the shadows and the shifting walls. The footage showed distorted, nightmarish visions, twisting figures, dark shapes, and the malevolent force that seemed to envelop the cabin. Finally, with a surge of adrenaline, Lucas managed to force open a window and climb out. He fled into the night, leaving the cabin behind. The forest was shrouded in an unnatural fog, and he felt as though he was being pursued. He ran until he reached his car and drove away, not daring to look back. When Lucas reviewed the footage, he found it was mostly corrupted or blank. The images he captured were fragmented and distorted, showing only fleeting glimpses of the horrors he had witnessed. The experience left him shaken and deeply disturbed. The Blackwood Falls cabin remained abandoned, its dark reputation undiminished. The whispers that Lucas heard became part of the local legend, a chilling reminder of the thin boundary between the known and the unknown. The cabin stood as a warning to those who sought to uncover its secrets, its dark forces forever trapped within its walls. The Last Guest at Pine Hollow Lodge Deep in the heart of a dense and foreboding forest in Maine, Pine Hollow Lodge had been closed for years, its windows boarded and its doors padlocked. Once a popular getaway for those seeking solitude and tranquility, it was now a place spoken of in hushed tones, surrounded by tales of ghostly apparitions and unexplained disappearances. Despite its reputation, Jacob, an adventurous historian, was determined to explore the lodge. He was fascinated by the lore surrounding it and was eager to uncover the truth. Equipped with his camera, notebook, and a sense of cautious curiosity, Jacob arrived at Pine Hollow Lodge on a misty autumn afternoon. The lodge loomed ahead, its once grand structure now a shell of its former self. The air was thick with decay, and the forest seemed unnaturally quiet. Jacob felt a shiver of anticipation as he approached the entrance. The door creaked open with a groan, revealing a dark, musty interior. Inside, the lodge was a ghostly shadow of its past. Dust covered every surface, and the furniture was shrouded in white sheets. The air was stale, and the only sound was the occasional drip of water from a leaky roof. Jacob set up his equipment in the main lobby, determined to capture every detail. As night fell, Jacob explored the lodge, documenting its eerie features. The walls were adorned with faded photographs of past guests, their eyes seeming to follow him as he moved. The lodge had an unsettling quality, as though it was holding its breath, waiting for something to happen. Around midnight, Jacob heard a faint noise, a soft, rhythmic tapping coming from one of the upstairs rooms. The sound was intermittent, almost as if someone was knocking gently. He followed the noise up the creaky staircase, the dim light from his flashlight casting long, flickering shadows. The tapping led him to a door at the end of the hallway. The door was slightly ajar, and as Jacob pushed it open, he was met with an old guest room. The room was unchanged from when the lodge had last been used. A bed with rumpled sheets, a dresser with a cracked mirror, and a single chair by the window. The tapping had stopped, but Jacob felt an uneasy chill. As he examined the room, he noticed something odd, a dusty journal lying open on the bed. The journal was filled with handwritten notes and sketches. The entries detailed the experiences of a guest named Eleanor, who had stayed at the lodge shortly before its closure. The final entry was particularly chilling. 
I've heard the whispers again. They grow louder each night. I fear that they are coming for me. The lodge is not what it seems. I must find out the truth before it's too late. As Jacob read the entry, he felt a cold draft sweep through the room. The temperature dropped abruptly, and the air grew heavy. Shadows seemed to dance on the walls, and the whispers began, a soft, haunting murmur that seemed to come from all directions. Jacob's flashlight flickered and went out, plunging him into darkness. He fumbled for his backup light, but the whispers grew louder, more insistent. The shadows in the room seemed to come alive, swirling and converging upon him. Panic set in as Jacob stumbled towards the door, but it slammed shut with a deafening bang. The room grew colder, and the whispers became a cacophony of voices, each one pleading, demanding, and threatening. Jacob felt an icy grip on his arm, and the whispers seemed to echo in his mind. Desperate to escape, Jacob grabbed the journal and fled from the room. The lodge seemed to come alive with movement. The walls groaned, and the floorboards buckled as though trying to trap him. Shadows converged upon him, their forms twisting and writhing. Jacob raced down the stairs, but the path seemed to shift and change, as though the lodge itself was trying to keep him from leaving. The whispers grew more frantic, and the temperature plummeted even further. The lodge was no longer a familiar place, but a nightmarish maze. Finally, Jacob burst through the front door and ran into the forest. The mist had thickened, obscuring his vision and making it difficult to find his way. The whispers followed him, their voices growing fainter but still present. He felt a sense of being pursued, though he couldn't see anyone. After what felt like hours, Jacob reached his car and drove away from Pine Hollow Lodge. The experience left him shaken and disoriented. When he reviewed the footage, it was mostly corrupted or blank, with only fleeting glimpses of the lodge's interior. Jacob never returned to Pine Hollow Lodge, and the place remained abandoned, its dark reputation intact. The whispers he heard became part of the local legend, a chilling reminder of the thin boundary between the living and the dead. Pine Hollow Lodge stood as a testament to the mysteries of the forest, a place where the past and the present intertwined in a haunting dance of shadows and whispers. For Jacob, the lodge was a stark reminder that some places are best left undisturbed and that the past often holds secrets best left buried. The eerie whispers of Pine Hollow Lodge continued to haunt his dreams, a spectral reminder of the thin veil separating reality from the unknown.